I'm glad you're here. Today, I'm going to help you fight a war against the shitty pizza chains by taking the means of production into your own two hands. You're going to make your own pizza hot and ready for the same damn price. Welcome to the Anarchist Cookbook. Okay, so it's just gonna take 20 minutes to make this pizza dough and you're gonna get two pizzas out of it. That's better than knocking out two bosses with one punch. That's right, boss. So here's our plot for destruction. The first thing you need to do is get one cup of hot water. Let the water run until it's as hot as your rage for the ruling class. From here, you can mix in one packet of yeast or use the bulk stuff. It lasts a lot longer and it's a lot cheaper. Just one and a half teaspoons is all you need. From here, we're going to add in a tablespoon of honey. And now you don't need to measure this. You know, the only regulator we need here is our gut. Whatever looks good. Uh, you can also use a tablespoon of sugar. Or if you want a vegan option, you can always use um, agave as well. So we're going to let that sit for 10 minutes. While you wait, you can think of new ways to undermine the state. It's gonna take a lot of little cuts to bring down the United States of America. Look for a farmer's market that you can pay with cash that they'll keep under the table. Perhaps there's even a new black market in your area you haven't been to yet. Get creative. I'll see you in 10 minutes. Now after 10 minutes, make sure it bubbles. If it doesn't bubble, it means an agent provocateur has sabotaged your shit. You need to go get some more from a trustworthy source. It's probably time to check out those black markets I was talking about. You want to throw in around two teaspoons of salt and around two tablespoons of oil. You know, I say about because it doesn't have to be precise. It's not like we're dismantling a system that perpetuates poverty and corruption. Now we add three cups of flour. If you can't find a local variety, I suggest checking out King Arthur or Bob's Mills. They're both employee owned companies. That means the people making the product get a piece of the profits. And all anarchy aside, folks, without any workers, there wouldn't be any profits. So let's start demanding it. Add only the first two cups of flour, one half cup at a time. This first set of flour will act as a vanguard to change the state in the bowl to make it something that we can work with better. So now we add the last cup. And just mix it up as good as you can. It's a pain in the ass to get it worked through. I usually don't bother with it. I give it a couple stirs and then just throw it on the counter. Scrape out the bowl really good. Get everything and pile it on the table. Now start working it in. Scooping up from the side all the extra flour and pressing it in with the heel of your hand. And give it some oomph. Like a cop's boot on the back of the head of a protester. You really want to get forceful. You're going to do this for six minutes. So set a timer and don't cheat. Keep working the dough around, flipping it, turning it, pressing until you have a beautiful ball of dough. Line a bowl with oil and then throw the dough inside and coat it as well. Then cover it. Let it rise for one to two hours. And that's all it takes. 20 minutes of work will get you two pizzas and you can bust these out anytime you like. Plus they last in the fridge for five to seven days. And two less pizzas from a hut each week is a revolutionary act towards toppling the dominoes of the Little Caesar's reign of terror. In that time, it'll get about two to three times its size and it's ready to go. If you're not going to use it immediately, it will stay in the fridge for five to seven days. Now split it in half like our two-party system so that it makes it easier to control. Then we're ready to go. So now it's time to make a pizza and it only takes 10 minutes. That's right. No more waiting around 45 minutes for a garbage pie dressed up in a cardboard box. The first thing you want to do is preheat your oven to 550 degrees. Now, you don't need a bougie pizza stone to do this. A fucking cookie sheet works just fine. So grab yourself some spray, grab some parchment paper, and we'll get this dough taken care of. 
So the first thing I always do, I grab my dough, I take it, start working around in your hands, uh, stretch it out a little bit, and then we're gonna move it onto the pan. Okay, so you can do this a couple of ways. You can either roll it out with a rolling pin, uh, or what I do is I just like to press out the dough. Now, you wanna make this a nice big pizza. These are great for sharing. Invite some friends over, talk to them about how we can abolish the current monetary system to get ourselves out from under this oppressive economy that is ruining everybody's lives. Okay, it's always important to season your crust. It makes it a lot more flavorful. So salt, garlic powder, black pepper, Italian herbs and spices, whatever you like, whatever flavors you're looking for, you're gonna get a lot more out of your pizza by doing that. Um, of course, you can go traditional or there's plenty of ways you can try out new pizzas. I'm doing barbecue sauce here with some cheddar cheese and some sweet potato and onions. Uh, one of my personal favorites. Uh, if you wanna go cheeseless for vegan pizza, I recommend you just always add pineapple to every pizza without cheese. Uh, it makes it that much better. Also capers. Um, have fun with it, find your own recipes, start to experiment. You wanna spread your cheese on in an egalitarian fashion, something that's equal for everybody. We wanna make sure that we all get an even distribution of the resources so that we all have a fair chance at enjoying this pizza. And then what I do instead of uh, chicken on a pizza like this is I do sweet potato that has been cooked with chili powder and cumin. It's a, an amazing pizza. I hope you'll try it. And there you have it. That's one revolutionary pizza. Invite some friends over this weekend so you can discuss taking over the means of production and other aspects of your life. Oh, fuck me. I forgot to tell you to throw it in the oven for 8 to 10 minutes.